All right, guys, welcome to the very first episode of the Powerful Impact Podcast. Today, I'm with my co-host, Rich Moses. What's going on, brother? What's going on? Peace, peace. And today, we are joined with a very talented artist, our first guest, Justo, the MC. What's going on, man? How are the vibes today, brother? Yo, chilling, man, chilling. I appreciate it. I didn't know I was the first, so this is this is huge. I appreciate that. Absolutely, Thank you, absolutely, man. Now, for the people who are unaware, just not too familiar, who is Justo the MC? What does Justo the MC do? Do you mind go ahead and just breaking down everything that is great about you? I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm a MC, obviously with the with the moniker on there. I'm an MC from Brooklyn, New York. I've been doing it for uh, about 15 years or so. Um, yeah, I'm a songwriter, uh, rapper, songwriter, um, dabble in production and engineering as well. But my main thing is obviously just being a wordsmith. And, um, yeah, man, I'm just happy to be here. Like I said, uh, um, yeah, it's just an honor to be the first, one of the first uh, MCs on this joint. Seriously. Right so on. thank you both. Absolutely, yeah, man. absolutely, man. You said, you said Brooklyn, right? Yeah. Born and raised in Brooklyn, East New York. Um, 80s baby yeah man 80s baby late 80s baby late borderline 80s baby, 90s baby because I'm, I'm 89 so cool, cool. Yeah. What, what was it like in the in, in the the 90s for you in, in brooklyn uh wow that's a good question um it was definitely the crack era so <laughs> I, there was definitely a lot of that going on i had two uncles who were actually very much in the life uh and so i, I saw it firsthand like you know what that did um to the neighborhood, what that did to the people around me. But at the same time, it was also a lot of good stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I think the 90s was probably one of the best times to be a kid. You know, I think it was probably one of the most genuine times to be a kid. The, t the way television shows were at the time, the way, you know, community was at the time, I think it was a lot of good things mixed in there, too. So, you know, take the good with the bad. Oh, cool. OK. How would you say how would you say Brooklyn has kind of developed you as a man and even your, your 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 music like how does that really affected you um you know brooklyn is is you know such a it, new york itself is just a place that gives you just you know you can't you, you can't sleep you can't you can't think straight you have to be you have to be on guard at all times you know i remember i was i was dating a girl one time and she she was out from out of the country um and uh she uh she said something to me one day she was like i noticed every time we go outside your demeanor changes and i was like what do you mean she was like well you know you're really like you know fun and, and friendly inside and then as soon as we go outside like you kind of like are more on guard and you're looking around and that was the first time you know it was like 15 years ago so you know what i'm saying it was a while ago but it, it was like it was the first time i was like wow i never realized that the environment did that to me you know what I'm saying? You have to be on guard at all times, especially growing up in the projects. I'm I, like, I'm from East New York, you know, uh, Linden Project. So being in the projects, if you know anything about the project life, especially in New York, it's, it's you know, it's, it's one of those things where you have to be on guard. You have to know what's going on around you, be aware at all times. And I think as an artist, it is it, it pushed me to a place where I'm kind of an introverted <laughs> person. So all that stuff going on outside kind of helped me to go even deeper into myself to figure out well, like what's going on with me. I didn't want to get caught up on what was going on outside, but I was still watching it. So it gave me a, a, a cool insight to be able to not really be in the life, but to see what was going on around me and kind of report that back in my music. Um, and then, like I said, like having uncles that got caught up in the drug stuff and, and, you know, uh, my own personal situations, you know, with, with family and, and friends, it just kind of like just build a lot of storytelling, you know. So I think it definitely helped with my storytelling abilities and my ability to really dig deep um, and, and deliver music. That's how it felt. Okay, cool, cool. That's that's really dope, man. Now, yeah, man. now, correct me if, if I'm wrong. I believe your latest release right now is This Is Me with DK, correct? This is me is the is the latest one so far right now. Yeah. Cool, cool. Is there is there anything else coming out that maybe you want to share? Maybe you want to keep under wraps? Anything we can expect? Um, I do have quite a few things. I mean, if anyone has followed my catalog, they know I've done a bunch of uh projects with a guy by the name of Meticulous, my brother Meticulous. 
Um, if you guys haven't heard about him, definitely look him up. He's a producer from the Pennsylvania area, from the Pittsburgh area, but he's right now based in Brooklyn. Um, and we linked up a couple years ago and we've done like two projects together, two full albums together and an EP. And we have another album coming out soon. It's already pretty much in the wraps. We just got to do the mastering for it, but that it will be coming uh, next year. Um, and then there's a bunch of other stuff I've, I got in the wraps, but I don't really want to put it out there yet because, you know, it's, it's just, it's either I got to do this or I got to do that. It's just not done. Right now, I've been doing a lot of features, and that's been really big for me right now. Oh, there's a lot of features. Yeah. Dope, man. Really, really dope. Yeah, like, uh, I really do enjoy your music. You know, obviously, Jeff Stowe, the MC, it kind of speaks for itself. You definitely are an MC. A lot of great Appreciate quotables you. in your music. And, you know, I, I, I kind of want to have a little bit of fun with you here. Since you're kind of used to, you know, spitting rhymes, I want to try to go yeah. ahead and spit a quick line to you. And you can tell me, you know, what it means to you, what, what you think of it. Okay, cool. Sound, sound cool? Okay. Yeah, that's dope. All right, hopefully I don't mess this up. All right, here, here we go. So, I was told Dark was ugly by my peers growing up. That's the way they all judge me. Wasn't good to be Wesley, get sniped without a second guess. My black skin was nothing to love. Luckily, I'm blessed. Does that sound familiar to you at all? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's uh, that's a uh, a joint from um, what was that? Uh, blank checks. I had I did an album, a a dual album, with uh with blanks. My my man blanks and uh, old man eighties, and that was one of the joints on there. Um, yeah, that's dope. <laughs> yeah dope. the track for those yeah. who don't know it is it is chocolate boy that was one of my favorite chocolate tracks boy, yeah, yeah. One, one of my favorite tracks on that album do you want to do you want to yeah. speak a little bit about that and kind of you know what inspired you what inspired you to write that one yeah i mean like you said i mean that line is a is just a perfect breakdown of of the song itself um just talking about being a Dawson brother you know in 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 the black community i feel like a lot of times you know we point our hand a lot in the black community at who's holding us back or who's talking about us or who's holding us down. And a lot of times we miss the fact that it, it's a lot of the times it's us, you know? Um, and growing up, I didn't grow up around white people. I didn't grow up around anyone but black people. And I was talked about my skin all the time, you know, being a darker skin brother. And I didn't, have, there was, it was only by people who looked like me, you know? And that was what that song was about was, you know, um, dealing with that growing up, being around people who are black, but in some way, shape, or form, my blackness, you know, offended them or or was something that they, you know, was easy to tease or talk about. And it was like, dude, we're all black. Like, it would be guys, like, literally, like, your complexion, a little darker. All they need is a little sun, and you're going to look just like me. So I didn't understand. <laughs> like, I was like... <laughs> I was like, yo, how how you really cut my ass and you all you need is a little sun, dog. You're gonna look just like me. So, yeah. you know, it was it was it was interesting, you know, it was something, but even like in the same song, I talk about how, you know, the girls, they didn't really care because as I got older, I, I saw I came up in a good era because that's when, you know, Tyrese was out and all these other Morris Chestnut. So the Dawson brothers started getting more love. You know, so I didn't go through, you know, it wasn't, it was, it was, yeah, the dudes was hating. Sometimes the girls was hating, but when I got older, I was starting to get the love. I was like, you know what, being chocolate ain't that bad. You know? <laughs> so it was, it was a duel. It was a dual thing. You go back and forth about it, but you know, it, it definitely was something that, that I wanted to put in a song form. And I felt like it was, it was the perfect time in the way the album was going. I was like, man, I could throw a joint like that in there, you know? And so I, I, I'm glad I did. And I'm glad you know, you, you was feeling it because it was definitely a song I wanted to make a point with. So went from the DeBarge area to, to the Wesley era. You, you know, know what, what I'm saying? It's like that. You know? Yeah. So <laughs> I came up in a good time. It was like, like I said, yeah. the 90s wasn't all bad. Man. The 90s nah. Wasn't all bad. <laughs> nah. So yeah, it definitely. But that song, yeah, definitely was a really personal track. Really personal track. Mm. Dope, man. Well, you, you you definitely got your point across on there. Just so, just one of the many showcasings of how excellent your uh, your pen game can be. So appreciate. It. I'm I'm really curious. You know, for someone like you, I'm sure you write all, like all the time. So, like, what is your writing process like? Um, it's interesting because I feel like it 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 changes here and there, just as far as like um, how I approach because it's always the beats usually dictate what i write about like i'm not a the kind of guy that already has rhymes set up like i usually don't do that i probably i, I don't think i've 
there's very few occasions where I've written something already before I had like a beat. I usually always go off the music. I'm a heavy music head. So, you know, I wait for the producer to send me something and then I carve out that beat, you know, whatever they send me and whatever's going on in my life or whatever the beat. Usually I'll listen to the beat and I instinctively will say, this makes me feel X, Y, and Z. And then I'll start pinning it down, you know, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll hum to myself and I'll do like, that's why if you notice, like my flow is always like, I, I'm never, I never have the same flow. I'm always doing different things. And that's because that's how I, I approach the beats. Like when I approach the beats, I'm always messing around with different cadences before I even write rhymes. And then once I get my cadence going, that's when the words will come. Um, so I'm, you know, I know some guys do it the total opposite way. They look for beats to fit their rhymes. Me, I look for producers to help me to, to find what's already inside. Me. You know what I mean? Okay. So I definitely do it, a. uh, uh I won't say a different way because I'm sure there's other artists that do it like me or do it that way, but um, that's that's just how I like to approach it. Okay, that's 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 really cool. <laughs> so yeah, that's dope. So I believe you said it. You said it earlier. How many years now have you been rhyming? Well, I I believe I started the first time I started rhyming. I was like 15, um, and I'll be oh, it was probably over 15 years. I don't want to you know date myself, but. Okay. I'm not old, but I'm not young. So, but yeah, it, I started around 15. So it's been, it's, it's been over 15 years. It's okay. been over 15 years. Because well, I just turned 32 this year. So yeah, it's been a while. Okay. So definitely well, well seasoned. So out of, out of all that time, I'm sure you have some pretty great stories, some pretty great memories. I'm, I'm curious, what is like some of the best memories you've had so far in your rhyming career? Uh, man. So I met a lot of people throughout my career. Um, I worked in a lot of studios throughout my career. One of one of the dopest scenarios I got into was I was actually in a I worked at Jam Master J's studio for a little bit. Um, this was after clearly after he had passed away or whatever. But he has a studio. It's now called Hall of Fame Studios. And there was a producer in there um, who I met. And he ended up being like one of my first managers, a guy by the name of Itani Ravis. Um, and that, it was a it was a dope situation. Like, you know, he, he had, threw a couple listening parties for me. Um, you know, it was dope. You know, it was dope to be in the, in a studio like that. Um, but I would say one of the best stories was the first time I had met. Uh, I didn't I didn't I met DMX once, but not for real. So what happened was <laughs> I I explain to you how that happened. So. I used to be managed by Vic Black, who is. Um, a part of the Gangstar Foundation. So I was affiliated with DJ Premier for like quite a few years. Um, and so one year, I don't know if you guys remember, you I, you guys know the, the BT Cypher, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So one year, it was the year that uh, they had DMX, they had Eve. I think that was 20, 2012. 2012, yeah. Yeah, yeah, when mm -hmm. they had Eve, yeah. Cassidy was in it, uh, T.I., all those guys, I got a chance to see up close and personal because Premier had got. Remember, DJ Premier was the DJ for the BT yeah. Cyphers. He would do the f f f f and then everyone would start rapping. So yeah. I got a chance to be there that year. Got a chance to meet. I mean, Joey Badass was just coming up at that time. I got to see him. I got to see ASAP Rocky. Um, uh, and, uh, what was her name? Andrew Hayes, Andrew I believe. Hayes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Childish Gambino. So I, I got to see all the up and coming guys. And then I got to be around, you know, the Eves, the Cassidy's, the Murder Mook was there. It was a whole bunch of people. But the funniest thing was DMX. So I'm in there. I'm, I'm in the back room. I was supposed to be one of the people that got a chance to rap with the up and coming guys. But Premier wasn't able to get it. You know, it, it just didn't happen. But I was still able to be there and be around everyone and be in, in the dressing rooms and all that stuff. Right. So DMX comes and instantly the energy in the, in the whole building changed because he, he like bangs through the door and he's like, whoa, smells like shit in here. And he's like, <laughs> like, he, like screaming at the top of his lungs. He's got like a bottle of cognac in his hand and, and he's like looking, he's like, where are we supposed to go? And he's like looking around. <laughs> and so, so we go, 
So we go inside. <laughs> so so he comes inside, and you know he's looking around and stuff. And eventually, <gasps> they tell us they tell us where to go, right? So we we're going downstairs, and my my cousin, well, Black is also my cousin. So my manager at the time, he's also my cousin. Um, he was like, "Yo, we going downstairs." So I'm like, "All right." So we go down, but DMX is in front of all of us. So he's going down. He like, oh, we supposed to go over here? All right, let's go then. He's talking to all his people <laughs> and he's telling them like, let's go. We going downstairs. Oh, let's go. So he go downstairs and he's like, out of nowhere, I, I can't make this up, y'all. Out of nowhere, he's like, come together right now. <laughs> and he's like going down the stairs, stomping mad hard because he's in Tim's and shorts and like stomping mad hard. And I'm like, yo, I can't believe this is DMX. <laughs> like, this is really him. Like, he's really like on some shit. So then we're at the bottom, right? Like, so we're downstairs. Uh, he's waiting for his time to go up. And this guy, I can't make this up either. There's a rapper there, this white dude named Kosher Dills. That's his oh, name. Yeah. I Jewish dude. Him. Yeah. Kosher Dills. So he's down there. He's rapping his ass off. He's just trying to freestyle with anyone and everybody. And DMX is like, yo. He was like, he was going to battle DMX. And I was like, is this guy stupid? So he goes to start rapping. And DMX is like looking at him, whatever, whatever. And then he goes to rap and he like kills it. And mind you, I'm like six feet away from dude. And I'm just watching him go in, killing this guy, Kosher Dills. And then he's like, um, then basically at the end of the, you know, at the end of the battle, whatever, he's like, you know, just stop trying so hard. You know what I mean? Like, just be yourself. I'm trying too hard. Like, he was like basically like schooling him, but shitting on him at the same time. It was great. It was great, man. It was like, that was the only time I got to see X ever. But it, it stuck in my mind because he's he's a big influence on my career. So yeah. the, to be able to see him in person, even though it was that one time, and even though I didn't actually get to say what's up to him, just to be in his energy and his aura, that 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 was crazy. But it was funny as hell too. So it it left a good memory in my mind. One well, one thing that I wanted to go and ask, if I could go and ask Take about ahead. you real quick, um, we know that everything's in the name. Um, could you could you explain to us like what your name comes from? Like, how did, yeah. how did you come up with your name? Yeah. Yeah, so funny story. So when I was um, starting to rap, I didn't have a rap name at all. Mm -hmm. And one of my homeboys had heard, I think, like, he was around me and my pops, and he had my pops use my middle name. And my middle name is Justin. And so for whatever reason, he thought that shit was hilarious. And he was just like, hey, Justin, blah, 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 Justo. And he started calling me Justo. My man Hollywood, like he's an older, he's like an older brother to me. And he was yeah. just like, Justo, Justo. And at the time, I didn't know. I've heard of the like the Justo mixtapes and all of that growing up right. in New York, but I wasn't, I didn't fully understand. So I, you know, I ran with the name because, you know, it, it sounded dope and I didn't have a rap name. When I started rapping, that that incident happened a little bit before I had ever spit in front of people. So when they asked me what my name was, I thought about that scenario and I was like, should I use that name that he was calling me the other day? <laughs> yeah. And I yeah. was like, I'm gonna just go with Justo. And I never let it go. That's been my name ever since. But I did get a lot of flack for for the Justo thing because I'm from East New York, just like the original DJ um Justo. Justo. And yeah. um, and so that's why Premier from DJ Premier actually gave me the MC part. Like, so Justo the MC, my name is Justo the MC because of DJ Premier, because he warned me. He's like, dude, you know, that's that's a big name where you from. You might want to yeah. put the MC on it to make sure you separate yourself because, so, you know, it's always more than one guy, you know, with, with a name. But you want to separate yourself and not, you know, um, have any static with that. So that's how that came about. When I put the MC on my joint, that was literally from DJ Premier, like said it to me face to face, like, dude. You should probably put that Monica on your name, and so that's that's really how the two combined, and that's how I got the name. Okay, because I, I I've always wondered because I remember the mixtapes and stuff, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, this is just yeah. those like brother, like is he? Nah, you know, they both nah. is there. <laughs> nah, so, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, and I never realized that's why he was calling me just though, because he was calling yeah. me that because it sounded Justin sounded like the the DJ just though, so that's why he was calling me that. It never hit. I was so young, you know what I'm saying? And I didn't really, I didn't realize, but yeah, now I definitely always try to pay homage to the big homie anytime I get a chance, you know, even though I never got to meet him, I never, you know, um, was, was, I wasn't even in the field when he was doing his thing, but, you know, definitely 
you know, always want to pay homage to 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 Justo for sure. Oh, cool. cool. Of course. So earlier you mentioned how uh, DMX, you know, was really big for you, right? You know, yeah. Is there is there anybody else you would say maybe even just two more people like a like a top three that was super influential to you? Somebody who you was just listening to a lot that was just mega big for you? Yeah. Um. This might surprise you. I mean, before the Jay Z's and and Nas's, I had to do my homework. I had to go backwards, you know, because I was so young when those guys were were, were prominent and Biggie, you know, all those guys. So when I was coming up, my high school years, G Unit was like the shit. Like that's who the big the 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 biggest artists in New York at the time were, you know, you had your Ja Rules and stuff, but I really liked G Unit because they were gritty. And, you know, being from Brooklyn, I, you know, I, I appreciated that a little more. So one of my favorite lyricists growing up was Lloyd Banks, believe it or not. I was a big Lloyd Banks fan, like a huge Lloyd Banks fan. Um, uh, him, 50, you know, they were two big influences on me. But as I started getting into it, definitely Nas. Definitely Jay Z um, and Biggie. When I really started listening to Biggie, I, I didn't really start listening to Biggie for real until I got much older, you know, my late teenage years. And he changed. He changed a lot of the way I, I kind of um, approach things, you know, because I didn't listen to him as much when I was when I was younger, and I wasn't even rapping when I was that, you know, a, a, a kid. So when I got older, and I really started getting into Biggie and seeing how much a, ahead of his time he was. You know, his flows at that time in the 90s was so different than what most guys was doing. You know what I'm saying? He the, he really was the leader of the way guys started flowing, you know, in the 2000s. You know, um, even to this day, when it comes to the, his cadences and the way he flips words, or ding, 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 uh, was not like leprechauns. You, you know what I mean? Like, he, guys wasn't rapping like that. Guys, you know, Jay-Z is probably one of the only guys who still, you know, who was carrying that torch and rapping like that, you know, um, because he he lived, you know what I mean? Biggie, unfortunately, you know, um, was killed. But, you know, th- those guys definitely changed the way, you know, I pre- and they're from Brooklyn. So when you got guys like Jay-Z and, and Biggie, you know, um, I definitely started paying more attention. And uh, they were definitely two guys, I would say, are a big influence on me, the G-Unit, um, squad as well with 50 and Lloyd Banks and um and Nas as well. Oh cool. Really great picks, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, so now that we got a pretty good introduction to who you are, obviously it's in the name. We know you're a, a very good MC, a great artist. Outside you, of the music yeah, of course, man. Outside of the music, like what do you like to do? Well I'm actually a big sports head. So you know I love I love sports. A lot. Like that was my first love before I got into music. I wanted to be a football player. I never grew. So I, <laughs> I deaded that. But I still have great hands. Rest assured, I have great hands. I, I was like, I mean, I don't want to boast, but I'm telling you, I was nice. I was like legit nice. Um, but now I, I, um, I'm just really into sports. I'm really into my family. I have two daughters. So, you know, I'm a, I'm a big time family man. I try to make sure I'm always, you know, available for them um in any way possible um but yeah you know i love documentaries like i'm a big documentary head like i watch i watch documentaries probably more than i watch regular tv because i just like reality you know i can't get into all that like you know fake reality tv and all that stuff i really love like learning different things but in documentary form like that's a big thing to me so um you know, probably boring shit to the average person, but you know, for me, like I'm, I'm a laid back dude, man. I'm not like in the streets like that, like how I used to be when I was younger. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I, I like, I like chill shit. Like I don't even, to be honest, people wouldn't even believe like the playlist I got. Like I don't even really listen to hip hop like that when I'm chilling. Like if I'm chilling, like I'm smooth jazzing it, I'm R and B in it. Like I'm a real laid back. Do. And if you listen to my music, you'll hear it. And, and some of the stuff I do, I tend to, to pick a lot of chill beats. Every once in a while, I get gritty on you. But, you know, I, I love like the, the the sonics of just like that old school, you know, soulful, um, uh, uh, just that, that style. You know, that's that's a big thing to me. But, um, yeah, you know, those are the kind of things I'm into. I, I actually coach, too. I, I used to uh, coach. I used to coach basketball. I used to coach uh, flag football, um, so I'm I'm really into like 
the sports and 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 um and the arts in that way. So those are just some things I like to do. Oh, the uh, the yeah. documentary one is is pr- pretty interesting. Is there like two or three documentaries you you would like recommend to somebody, or maybe the ones that kind of impacted uh, you a bit? Hmm. That's man. I, I watch so many, and I, I damn you caught me because right now <laughs> I can't think. You know what? I just watched one recently about Malcolm X and 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 uh, Muhammad Ali. It was dope. I think it's called Blood Brothers on yeah. Netflix. That joint is is yeah, is really enlightening, man. Like it's really enlightening. I didn't even know that they had. They kind of sold it because they weren't as tight as they made it seem. But but um. But it is very interesting to see how they um how their paths were crossed and how that whole thing with the nation is like it was dope. It was that's what the, I would I would say definitely check out Blood Brothers. That was a dope one. Um there's a ton, man. I can't yeah, there's a ton. But that let's let's start with that one. That's a good one. Check that one out. Check out Blood Brothers. There's also a joint called Untold, also on Netflix. And they have a whole like list of joints, but one of the joints is about the uh Malice in the Palace. That shit is crazy. I don't know if you guys ever heard of that. If y'all watch yeah. basketball when, yeah, the, when the Pistons and the Pacers had that big fight. That was um, they, um yeah, that was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they have a whole documentary just talking about that. They have Ron Artest and Steven Jackson, and they were all talking about it. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's you crazy. know what's funny about that documentary? I don't know if you if you you probably remember this, the fact that Ron Artest. Asked Stephen Jackson, was like, you think we're gonna get in trouble? Yo, like, every yeah, time yeah. you bring that up. But <laughs> <laughs> well, Ronald Test, man, that guy, like, he really had, he really had problems, man. Like, they yeah, don't, they did. don't realize that man had a lot yeah, of issues, issue. bro. He had a lot of issues. And and the funny thing was, the year that that fight happened, he wanted time off. He wanted time off before the season started. Like he said, he That's didn't right. feel right. He wasn't feeling yeah. good. You know, yeah. and I always, I always say that I feel like people always get on people after the fact. Like yeah. most times, people are asking you, like, "Yo, I need help," and a lot of times, people don't listen until something goes down, and that's what happened. And so I, I felt bad for him when I realized that. But it's a good documentary, real good documentary. Another thing is that you know sometimes those people don't know how to ask for help. You know, that's true. In an, that's effect, true. In an effective manner, and so forth. So. Uh, yeah, that's that's a very good point. One thing that I wanted to go and ask if it's cool is you mentioned that you're a coach. And mm-hmm. um, my question for you is, like, how do you see the impact for that, like, in the youth? I'm assuming it's, it's, it's like a lot of youth based. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so forth. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so so how did how do you feel that that impacts the youth? And is it like basically based in East New York, uh, pretty much that your coaching was at basically nah. based in East New York? Nah, okay. the beast. Nah, uh, surprisingly, it's in Manhattan. It's in like the city. Okay. Okay. And, and I was co- I've coached. I've coached black kids. I've coached white kids. I've coached Hispanic kids. So I've coached, you know, Asian kids. So I've been around a lot of different kids. And the only the main factor I get from that is that you know I have an opportunity, you know, as a black man to show all races and all kids that they can have someone they can look up to that maybe not necessarily looks like them, but they can see a good example in what a black man is instead of what's given in, in you know, in society and was put on yeah. television. You know what I'm saying? And I've, I've got, I've, you know, I, I got kids to this day, you know, they're in high school now, white kids that still follow me on Instagram, still holler at me, still even listen to my music. Some of them know I do music, you know what I'm saying? Um, still remember, got stories of, of, you know, um, times I coached them and, and times we've had, you know, out in the field. So, yeah. you know, those, those things are, I think that's the, the, the biggest thing I get back from is that, you know, kids get a chance to be around a brother who's from the neighborhood I'm from, but not bringing that, that uh, mentality that a lot of them think, you know, guys who sound like me, look like me, um, ultimately will bring to the table when they, when they come, in, when they're in your presence, you know, I can, mm-hmm. I can, I can, you know, um, hold myself accountable. I can talk to them like people, you know, I can't, because that's what brothers do, you know, but a lot of times yeah. society want to make it seem like we, we're not like that, but it's yeah. not true. And I know a lot of brothers who came from the same situations like me who do what I do and, and they, they put that same mentality out there, you know, and, and, you know, it's a beautiful thing. 
So I hope more brothers yeah. get into if if not if not coaching, counseling, some kind of way that you're you know talking with the youth and letting the youth see that you know what they see on television or what they hear from the media is it's not all true. A lot of us ain't going around yeah. here robbing people and beating people <laughs> up. I've been around these white parents and stuff, and I treat them. You know, they 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 see. I treat them with respect. They treat me with respect. They ain't no problems. They ain't never been no problems yeah. because that's not how we get down. You know what I'm saying? So that's the biggest thing that I that I take away from 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 being a coach outside of just, you know, obviously teaching them a sport, but being a good role model for all kids, you know. Cool, yeah. man. That's 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 really Yo, kudos to you for that, man. Kudos to you. I appreciate you. that. Excellent Thank work, you. Man. Thank you. Thank you. So last year in March, around mid mid March, the world changed from that very yeah. crazy pandemic. Yeah. So it's affected everybody, some worse than, than others. You know, I'm kind of curious, just though, how has it affected you personally, you know, your music, <laughs> your family, you know, if you want, like, I, as deep as you are comfortable going. Nah, course. man, it's cool. Look, man, I'm, I'm, one thing you're going to realize about me, I'm, I'm unfiltered, man. I don't, that, that hiding shit and all of that, that doesn't do anything for me. Like, I want people to know who I am. You know what I'm saying? So, um, that was crazy. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but it was wild. It was, it was tough. It was tough, you know. Um, like I said, I got two kids, so being at home with them every day, and they're young. I got a, I got a, I got a five year old and a three year old. They're young, so you know it was. And at the time, they were four and two, so it was fun. It was a lot of fun, but at the same time, you know, I got to learn a lot about myself. I got to learn a lot about the people around me. You know, seeing all the changes on the news and seeing everything that was going on, you know, with the pandemic and even now with, you know, the arguments about the vaccine and all this stuff. Just seeing how people, seeing people's true colors. I feel like a lot of people's true colors were coming out, even in my family. Like just seeing, like when when there's a crisis, I always say that when there's a crisis, you always see people's true colors. You always see how people really deal with stuff. And I think... um I went through a lot of that. I went through a lot of like changes, a lot of, okay, I got to readjust. A lot of past shit was coming up because everyone was just in the house, you know what I mean? Thinking. So a lot of past stuff will come up, a lot of healing. You know what I'm saying? Um, it was, it was, it was a lot, man. But, you know, unfortunately I, I say this to, to my, to my wife all the time. I was like, I don't trust people who didn't either go bad shit crazy or elevated themselves during the, during the pandemic. Because something had to change in you. Like, if nothing changed in you and you're still the same person you was when this, when this thing started, there's something wrong with you. Like, it's, it's, it's something wrong. Because it was, a lot, it was a lot, man. It was a lot. And I feel like people either elevated, changed their mentalities, or they just went batshit crazy. But um, either way, I feel like, you know, it, it, it did something. It shook us all up. And for me, it shook me up in a good way. You know, it was hard, but it definitely shook me up in a good way. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, go ahead, Rich. You want to say something? No, I was just gonna ask. Just uh, you know, on that on that note, um, what do you think this means? This it, it seems like you know with the pandemic, this is gonna be the new normal, uh, at least mm -hmm. for a while. Mm -hmm. What do you think this means for artists who rely heavily on touring and merch? Um, how how do, how do we? Do you have any ideas about how they adjust and how they adapt? Yeah, so I didn't do my due diligence. I'm sorry. On the music front, um, for me personally, I thought it was a good thing. I thought it helped me because the kind of artist I was anyway, I was doing a lot of stuff at home anyway. Um, and so it helped me to figure out different things as far as um, getting my music out, um, um, you know, the distribution stuff, but at the same time, finding licensing situations, finding stuff like that, that, you know, wouldn't be the ideal, you know, going out and going on tour. Yes, I feel like it's going to hurt guys in the long run, especially if we go through another lockdown. Right now, you know, it seems like things are opening back up in a way. So I don't know if it's going to hurt guys as much, um, but I think it's definitely going to open artists into a different world of being able to find different ways to build revenue than just the, you know, the average way that they tell us, you know, you go, you do your tours and, and things like that. You know, licensing is huge. If you got your publishing together, you know, if you're finding situations where you're getting, where you're getting, you know, um, on television, where you're getting your, your, your music on, on TV shows and things of that nature, um, 
you know, it's not just one way to do it. And so I feel like, you know, artists are going to figure it out. I feel like artists already have figured it out. I got I got one homegirl who linked up with this company that you make songs personalized for people. You know, like they I think it's like a something where it's like almost like a Valentine's Day thing. But you could do it year round with people, you know, who want to express their feelings for their loved ones. They go to this company, they get an artist, they pick an artist and that artist makes the song. And, you know, so stuff like that, where it's like it's so many ways that I feel like artists are going to learn that, you know, we don't have to do it the regular way that they say that the industry says, you know, there's so many ways that you can you can find ways to, to you know, to make money and to do what you love. And you don't have to do it the stereotypical way. You know what I'm saying? Because honestly, if you don't got that machine behind you, you it's, it's going to take you a lot longer to make those to make those situations, at, at least to make yourself feel like a Drake or, or whoever. It's, it takes, it, you know, you're going to need a lot of people behind. You. You're going to need that machine behind. You. you know what I'm saying? But there's ways you could do it without all that. And so I feel like artists are going to figure that out. Right, right. Cool, cool. So just though, 15 years in the game, like you said, rhyming, doing your thing. For somebody who is an upcoming artist, you know, whether it be MC, producer, you know, what kind of advice would you give to them? That's a good question. Um, just be patient. Like, be patient. It's going to be a lot of ups and downs. But be patient. Um, and don't be hesitant to just say no. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like a lot of artists, I've gotten a lot of situations just because I tried stuff. You know what I mean? You know, people are like, yo, you want to do this joint? Yeah, why not? And they end up being something that really, like, help me out you know what i'm saying i feel like a lot of artists they have a one-track mind they feel like i just want to be like that guy so i want to do it exactly how that guy did it and it's not how it works that everyone has their own path you know what i'm saying if you so gun hold on doing it like that guy you're gonna miss your own path and you're gonna miss you know having longevity because to me i never wanted to chase you know being like the next big name i wanted to have longevity i didn't want to be a guy that just got one big track and everyone like that one track and then no one gives a damn about you anymore you know what i'm saying which is happening a lot now especially with tiktok you see it you hear a song is it might be trash to us but everyone's <laughs> dancing to it the dude you know the dude or the lady they 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 get a, a you know a situation from it and then you don't hear about them no more you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's a track that's like on one of those memes or 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 like a challenge or whatever. And then you don't hear about it anymore. Or the or the artist was trash to start with. They just like that particular song. You know what I'm saying? I never wanted to get on that tip. You know, I, I wanted people to really like, like today I had a homeboy who was going through his catalog and he saw I had took a song down and he was he hit me up. He was like, yo, bro, I was looking for this song because I wanted to vibe out today. I saw it wasn't there. I was like, damn, I didn't even know people was looking for it like that. That's why I took it down. You know what I'm saying? But you never know. You know what I'm saying? You never know. That's what I want, though. I want people to hit me up because that song moved them for their day. You know what I'm saying? It, it made their day. It, it, it's a song they, they start their the day with or in their day with or whatever. Like, I think, you know, if, if artists come into it with that mentality, um, I think, you know, it'll take a little longer. But, um, I mean, it'll definitely be worth it. I feel like they just have to be patient and do do them. Do what they love to do. Don't just do what you see, you know, everyone else doing because it looks popular or it looks like, you know, they're making all the money. It's not everything at the end of the day. Right, right. Absolutely. So so just so the MC, you're an, you're an MC, obviously. You're a sports fan, coach, family man. By the <laughs> end of it all, when it's all said and done, how would you want your legacy uh, to how, how do you want people to remember you? Another good question, bro. Um, you know, I I always think of like back in the day, I used to watch like a lot of like Muhammad, Muhammad Ali and and uh, Bruce Lee, like guys like that. Where you just see them and you just like, yo, that aura is just crazy. Like Michael Jackson, you know what I'm saying? Like you just see that cat and you're like, man, that aura is crazy. Like that person is just. I don't know why they're so dope, but they're just dope. You know, I, I, I feel like if I got that, if I got people just like, Yo, remember Justo? That dude was just, he was just dope. Like, it was just something about him. Like, even if people don't have words about me, but just the energy that I brought to the table, you know, the way I, I you know, hopefully made them think or make them feel, 
I think that that would be huge, you know, just to have that kind of aura, that kind of stamp. If I could compare with the kind of stamp on the game, I would want to be like a, like how J. Cole or Kendrick, you know, they pop up and it's just like, man, this dude's aura. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to, I don't want to have them wait. I don't want to have make the people wait as long as J. Cole and, and Kendrick, though. I wouldn't do that to the people, but um, I definitely would want that kind of, that same kind of energy. You know, like when you wait for an album from Cole or Kendrick, be like, man, like, I've been fiending for this. You know what I'm saying? I've been waiting for this. And I know for Cole, or, you know, especially when he dropped his, his, his latest joint, I know it, more than anything, more than the money or anything, it was the excitement of people just being like, oh, Cole about to drop. I know for any artist, like, that's like, that just fills your heart. You know what I'm saying? For anybody, I mean, for anything you do, if you know people are waiting for you, like, you can't put that into words. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's something amazing. And that's that's really what I'm looking for. I'm looking for people to be like, yo, when Justin gonna drop that next <laughs> toy, bro? Like, I'm fiending, I'm waiting. It's better than the money, bro. Like, that's it's so much better than the money. Because, like, you know you're really impacting people's lives. So, like, that's that's really what I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking for. Oh, that's, that's, that's a great answer, man. Now, I have one very important question to ask you. But before I do, Rich, is there anything else you want to talk to Justo about? No, nah, man. Um, no, this is, once again, thank you very much for to being the very first for christening this off right. You know, this, appreciate is, you guys. this has just been such an excellent conversation. The TMX story, just, your whole story, <laughs> is, your whole story is amazing, man. So we appreciate thank you, bro. Mm-hmm. Thank you. All right, cool, it. cool. So for, la- for the last question, it could be mm-hmm. one, two, three people who have had the most powerful impact on your life. <sighs> wow. Yo, YGT, you're killing it today, man. <laughs> These questions are great. Um, man, I would say one, definitely my grandmother. My grandmother, my, my, mater- my maternal grandmother was definitely a big, a big influence on my life. Um, she just told me a lot of great things, even though, you know, she, she passed away when I was like 10 or 11 years old, but that showed you how much, like, she was just a huge influence on my life, you know, um, 20 something years. And I still remember things she told me, you know what I'm saying? So my, my grandmother, definitely my maternal grandmother, um, my, uh, you know, DJ Premier, I would say is, is music wise, knowing him personally, having a personal relationship with him, being around him, learning from him. I would definitely say Premier has been, you know, he, he's taught me a lot of stuff, you know, whether he said it out loud or I was just watching him or just seeing his path, being in his presence and learning from him, man, was huge. And I f- would say music wise, you know, and even in life, he's been a huge influence. Um, and so really blessed to have, you know, had that situation um, and still having him around, you know, in, in certain ways, you know, it's, it's been huge. And, um, you know, lastly, I would say my kids, you know, my daughters, they've been a huge influence. Or they've changed me a lot. They've made me stand up for myself more, you mm-hmm. know, because I don't know if you guys have kids or not. But when you have kids, it just changes how you approach people, you know, like it changes it changes your your outlook on life, but it also makes you, you know, when you have someone to protect, like for real, it just changes the way you you protect yourself. It changes the way you even put yourself out there. You know what I'm saying? So my kids, you know, they've, they've helped me to make a lot of decisions that I probably wouldn't have made if I didn't have kids. You know what I'm saying? So I think, you know, those are, those would be the three that I can think of off top. I mean, it's probably, you know, more people out there, but right now those are the three people I could think of. Well, four people because I got two kids, so. <laughs> right on. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Just though, yeah. where can they find you? So you can find me on Instagram uh, at Justo the MC, J-U-S-T-O-T-H-E-M-C. Uh, you can find all my music on the digital platform. Same thing, Justo the MC. So if you go to iTunes, you know, Spotify, all that, you just put in Justo the MC, J-U-S-T-O-T-H-E-M-C. You'll find all my stuff. Um, I also, uh, those, are the, those are the best ways. I mean, I have a, um, a link tree also, but you can find that link in my Instagram. So anything, you know, anything I'm putting out right now, um, you'll be able to find that on YouTube. Same thing, Justo the MC. Um, 
Yeah, man, it's pretty simple. You just type that in and uh, you'll be able to find all my joints. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Well, just though, really appreciate you coming through for the first episode of the Powerful Impact Podcast, bro. Really looking forward to to see just, you know, what's going on with you, with you in the future. I can't wait to look in the past and compare it. Today's just though to where you're going to be in the future. I'm sure it's going to be a, a appreciate that. beautiful thing, man. Yeah, man, that's I appreciate it. appreciate that. We are out of here, man. Appreciate y'all. Peace. 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 Peace.